get it? I was needing this dough. I'd like to welcome you guys to another episode of Kneading Dough. I'm joined by the fantastic and lovely Lindsey Vaughn, and also a live audience for the first time on the episode. How you doing? So, I want to start with you growing up. At what point did you realize I can actually be a skier for a living? This is what I'm going to do. Well, so when I met Peekaboo Street when I was nine, she was my inspiration growing up and she was the reason why I wanted to be an Olympian. And my goal was to make the Olympics in 2002, which I, would, I was 17 at the time, or I would be 17. And you know, my dad had always preached to me growing up that you, know, you don't want to be a ski bum. So I kind of always thought of skiing as a platform to something. Um, and I, I always looked to Peekaboo because at the time she was so successful. She was the first person to really make good money off of ski racing. And so I thought, well, if she can do it, yeah. I can do it. So when I was kind of making my plan to make the Olympics, I went through it with my dad and he said, if you can make the Olympic team and reach these and these goals by, you know, five, 10 years, you could potentially be making, you know, this and this much money. Oh, wow. So he had that conversation with you about money. Yes. And how old were you at the time? I was like 13, 14. Wow. <laughs> we had wow. big, big goals. Jeez. He was on it. <laughs> he was on it. I mean, I think I do give my dad a lot of credit. He never pushed me, you know, in, in that way uh, when I was growing up, but um, he definitely made me realize a lot of things. In team sports, it's very un easy to understand how an athlete get p gets paid. Skiing is a bit different, I think. So for, th for those of us who don't understand how skiers make money, explain to us how do, as a skier, do you get paid? Because you don't get paid to, to go to the Olympics, correct? No, no. Uh, we, getting paid through ski racing is very, very difficult. It's a very steep pyramid. Um, if you're not in the top five or 10 in the world, you're struggling to not have to get a second job. Wow. We get paid from the International Ski Federation. Um, I believe they changed the rule last year. It's one to 30. So 30th place gets like a check for $200. So like if you go to the World Cup, the 30th place gets a check. So that's how they This is not you. like golf or tennis, <laughs> yes. okay? We're yes, not, exactly. We're, there's no six figure checks there's coming no millions, our way. Yeah. Normally it's about $30,000 before taxes. Wow. And usually we're in another country. So we're taxed from you know, Austria or Switzerland or wherever, and then taxed again from the U.S. So really, it's nothing. Got it. And so for you, it sounds like, for you, making money is all about endorsements and, it's all and endorsements. sponsorships. Exactly. And, and and that's where I give my dad a lot of credit, because I did think about that, and I always have kind of thought of how I can transcend sport. So I look at companies that fit my personality. Um, I look at companies that I want to have a long-term relationship with. Companies like Under Armour, Red Bull, Rolex, you know, Rolex was one of, I think, for me personally, the most gratifying sponsor to have because I wasn't necessarily getting paid a lot, but that represented something so much more. Exactly. Under Armour, I was, I'm the longest standing Under Armour athlete currently, and wow. uh, it's been like 11 years now. As you've now been skiing and doing this for a while. Is there any advice or about money or about business that you would give your younger self, like watch out for this or do this or don't do that? Um, maybe don't get married. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you got great, married? That was a great one. <laughs> Live audience, this is what exactly, it's for, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, I was married at 22. That's good advice. So anyone in here not married and young, you've got that advice for free. Forewarned. Exactly. You're forewarned. You're forewarned. And, and when it comes to money, we all have things that we love to buy. It's like guilty pleasure. What is yours? What is your thing that you love to, to splurge on? I'm very frugal, but I kind of... Louis Vuitton is my I have a problem. Really? It's my initials. That is a good point. I don't think about that. It's, so it's like listen, everything is made for yeah, me. Exactly. You have to have everything. I know. Yes. So a, a topic we've discussed on Needing Dough before with other female guests is the, is the wage gap in sports and specifically their sport. Is there a wage gap in skiing? Do men make a lot more than women or is it not that in skiing? Um, the 
prize money for races is, is, is the same, um, which is very minimum. Um, but, I mean, everyone talks, you know, all of our contracts are confidential, but I, I roughly know how much the men make and how much the women make. Um, it is a pretty severe gap. But um, I'm hoping that I can get women in ski racing more publicity and give them the push and the platform that they need to make more money. And for you, how important is it for you to also break all the records, men and women, and be the winningest skier of all time? It's very important. Like I literally am not going to stop skiing until I, I reach that mark because I don't like being the best female. I really don't. I want to be the best of all time, period. And for me, just to have that record would solidify my career. And then I can say I'm the greatest and I don't need to say female or American. You know, it's. Just it really bothers greatest. me. They're like, oh, you're the best American. I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not it. Exactly. Well, I think you will. I think you'll break all the records and be the greatest skier of all time. Thank so you. So great way to end it. Thanks again for joining us on Need and Dough, and thanks to our live audience.